Before I start this video, I just want to say that the podcast is officially out now. The link to our first podcast episode is going to be at the top of the description. Like I said in my previous video, we want to make Spotify our main platform for this podcast. So Spotify will be getting the podcast episodes a few days earlier. So be sure to hit that link and go follow our Spotify podcast page thingy whatever it's called and also if you haven't done so already subscribe to the broad entertainment youtube channel because if you don't have spotify or if you don't feel like downloading spotify or if you use apple music or something else the episodes will eventually be put on youtube but at a later date just keep in mind episodes go up first on spotify anyways let's get to the video every year the texans have a few players that kind of break out last year They had Sack Cunningham, you can argue Carlos Hyde. I mean, no one really expected Carlos Hyde to come in here and have over a thousand rushing yards. Uh, You could also argue that DJ Reader, even though Reader was already good coming into the year, he kind of elevated his game to a next level, a level where that we just couldn't afford to keep him anymore. So you can argue DJ Reader was also another breakout player. So... Today, we're going to go over my top five breakout candidates for this season. And when I mean breakout, I mean going from relatively unknown as a player to like star status. Like people know who that guy is. They're going to watch out for him when they're playing their favorite team. You know, that kind of status, like not necessarily superstar status, but like a player that other fans other teams respect and they know what impact he can bring to a game and let's start off with some honorable mentions guys that didn't make the list i'm gonna start off with max sharping now max sharping doesn't make the list because he's an offensive lineman so it's pretty hard for offensive linemen to kind of break out and become a household name especially when they play guard unless like you're Quentin Nelson and you're like expected to be the next big thing it's hard for offensive linemen to kind of be put into a star offensive lineman status unless like I said he has like first round hype around him like a Lermy Tunsil a Tyron Smith Zach Martin Quentin Nelson you know like it's hard for offensive linemen to be considered stars I guess you could say or breakout players so that's why Max Sharping did not make the list and I also have a bunch of other players above him I feel like the Texans have a lot of players this year that could potentially break out next guy I have on my honorable mentions and a lot of people might disagree with me for this and it's Jacob Martin I think Jacob Martin can be a very very good player for us but the reason why Jacob Martin didn't make the actual list is because I have a feeling that Jacob Martin isn't gonna see a huge jump in playing time I just don't see it like last year he played like what 20% of snaps I feel like this year he's probably gonna play the same amount why we drafted Jonathan Grenard we have Whitney Merciless we have JJ Watt those are our primary edge rushers they're in love with uh, Brendan Scarlett um they drafted Jonathan Grenard in the third round so he's also gonna get some playing time also add in Duke Ezra four so I really don't think this is a I don't think Jacob Martin's gonna be good type of thing it's gonna be more of a there's not enough snaps to go around for all these players and I know some people are gonna ask me about this guy but Will Fuller I'm not putting Will Fuller on this list because I feel like the NFL knows what Will Fuller is capable of Will Fuller is kind of a star already he's just unfortunately always hurt so Will Fuller you know he's not a breakout candidate because people already know who he is they already know what he does what he can do and what he can't do which just can't stay on the field but yeah and other people might ask about Deshaun Watson um Deshaun Watson he's a star quarterback already Um, I mean I do think he's gonna elevate his game to the next level but I feel like it'd be kind of lame to put him on the list you know so I decided to leave him off the list, but I do think Deshaun's going to have a way better year this year than previous years, his best year in his career so far, in my opinion. So yeah, I just left him off the list. All right, let's get into this list, though. 
At number five, I have Charles Omenehu. Charles Omenehu has been a guy that I've seen that he's been working really, really hard this offseason. He's bulked up some. Now, as an interior pass rusher, he's definitely very capable. Where his problem lies is stopping the run. If he can put on some weight, which it does look like he has, I think he could be an every down player. But as of last year, he was only a situational pass rusher. But if he can turn into an every down player with those long arms playing on the inside against those tubby guards, I think he has a huge advantage over them. And I think he can become a very good player for us alongside Ross Blacklock. Imagine him and Blacklock pass rushing from the middle. Yeah. But like I said, he's got to work on his run stopping ability. He was a little too light last year, but it's okay. You know, most young players that come into the league come in too light they usually add on like a few pounds after their first NFL offseason so here we are hopefully he's able to put on a few pounds but he keeps his athleticism and obviously he's going to keep his length his arms aren't going to get shorter so he'll be fine in that aspect so I could definitely see Charles Amenahu becoming a household name now number four another guy I have seen working extremely hard and I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it too. And this is probably the hardest working Texan I have seen this offseason. And I'm talking about Lonnie Johnson. Last year, Lonnie Johnson, you know, he has some few flashes, but he also had his bad moments. I've seen a lot of people say, man, Lonnie Johnson sucks. He is a rookie. Or he was a rookie. Understand that. And I've seen some people say, Whoa, that's not an excuse. Uh, yes, it is an excuse. Playing quarter as a rookie is extremely hard. Unless you're Jalen Ramsey, you're going to struggle your rookie year as a corner. And that's just facts. No rookie corner comes into the NFL and just dominates every snap and balls out. Those are some extremely unrealistic expectations. And for whatever reason... People said that on Lonnie Johnson. He was a second round pick. He had his flashes. Yes, he had his bad moments, but he also had his flashes. And guess what? He recognized where his game needed work. And he started working on it. He went with the footwork king. He's been working really hard on his footwork and his hip movements. You know, last year we called him Sailboat Lonnie because when he would churn, sometimes it would take forever for him to churn and... You know, he would turn like a sailboat. So we called him Sailboat Lonnie. But he went to go work on that. Now he's Motorboat Lonnie. He turns really fast. Hopefully, he's able to put all that together and like have it translate to on-the-field play and become a nice player for the Texans. I think Lonnie can really turn into cornerback two of the future for the Texans. Now, coming in at number three, I have an offensive lineman, Titus Howard. Unlike Max Sharping, Titus Howard went in the first round, so he has first round status. People kind of know who he is. Titus Howard is kind of known as the guy that the Texans had to settle for because they passed out Andre Dillard. Even though Andre Dillard did terrible his rookie year, and Titus Howard was, in my opinion, the best rookie offensive lineman, or you know, at least the best rookie offensive tackle, and I think that's by far. So the Texans did not make a mistake, and you know, I guess passing on Dillard or missing out on Dillard because Titus Howard is way better than Dillard way better and it's honestly not even close Dillard over there looks like Breno Giacomini I'm not even playing and Titus Howard was arguably our best run blocking offensive lineman and keep in mind in his very first start at the right tackle position he had to play against Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa they got zero sacks zero sacks. Titus Howard only played eight games his rookie year. Hopefully this year he plays all 16 games. He's probably already working out trying to get better right now as we speak getting stronger you know watching film. He's only gonna get better and like I said he was arguably our best run blocker once he went down like our run game kind of went bad so bringing him back He's going to be a nice run blocker for us. Also, great protection for Deshaun Watson instead of having Chris Clark and uh, who was that other guy? Uh, 
Rod Johnson out there. Instead of having those guys out there, we're going to have our first round pick offensive tackle out there across from Lermie Tunsil. Lermie Tunsil and Titus Howard. We already have one star offensive lineman. We're probably going to have another one with uh, Titus Howard. So imagine having two star offensive tackles protecting your quarterback. You, you just, you know, you just got to love it. Okay, at number two, I have Justin Reed. Now, Justin Reed last year could have been his uh, breakout year, but unfortunately, the dude played with a messed up shoulder all year long. And hey, man, he's a warrior for that. Not many guys would be willing to do that. And I mean, you saw it all year. Uh, Justin Reed didn't look like rookie Justin Reed. He was missing tackles while rookie Justin Reed was a sure tackler. You kind of wondered. It's like, hey, man, uh, maybe something's wrong with Justin Reed. But after the season, they came out. Justin Reed played the whole season with a messed up shoulder. He had a shoulder brace on all year long. He exit a bunch of games because of that shoulder and like at some point I wondered is this guy gonna be put on IR but nope he just kept coming back kept coming back kept coming back this guy is a fighter and I absolutely love him and I think this next year he's gonna have his breakout year that he should have had last year if it wasn't for that shoulder injury I think he's an all-around good safety he can play in the box he can play deep he has great range He's an all-around safety that can do it all, and I think Justin Reed can really become a household name. I feel like Justin Reed is like an afterthought in the NFL. Like People talk about Derwin James, Jamal Adams, Mika Fitzpatrick, and all these other guys, but nobody ever mentions Justin Reed when they're talking about the young safeties. After this season, they're going to mention Justin Reed. Guarantee it. And at number one... Our number one breakout candidate, I have Garyon Conley. That's right, Garyon Conley. I feel like a lot of people overlook Conley. In the NFL, Conley is kind of known as a bust. Why? Because the Raiders traded him, you know, he was a first round pick and they traded him two years later. He's a bust. Texans paid a third round pick. That was too much. He sucks. Uh Aha, Texans suck. You know, that's kind of like the, I guess, stigma around Gary on Conley he's not good that's why he got traded and the Texans are dumb that's why they traded for him so that's like the little thing going around with Gary on Conley but if you actually watched Gary on Conley play last year the dude balled out he was in my opinion our best corner yes you know Roby might have gotten cool INTs but Conley shut his guys down bro like he shut his guys down Gary on Conley is a shutdown corner. He's going to be a shutdown corner. Don't believe me? Go watch that Bills game. He shut his guy down. It wasn't for Gary on Conley. We lose that game. Yeah, Conley might not get the awesome INTs, but they hardly ever throw his way. And unlike Roby, when Conley allows a catch, he doesn't give up on the play. A lot of the times when Conley allowed a catch, he would rip that ball out, and I absolutely love that about Gary on Conley. He doesn't give up on the play. And I'm not trying to talk mess about Roby, but when you look at Roby, when Roby allows a catch, instead of going for the ball, he goes for the tackle. So, yeah, they're like two different players in that aspect. Conley doesn't give up. Roby goes for the tackle to, you know, minimize Yak. So, it's not really that big of a deal, but I love that about Gary on Conley. Like I said, watch that Bills game. Dude shut down his guy. Saved two touchdowns from happening. I mean, T.Y. Hilton, yeah, he came back hurt that game, but Gary on Conley put the clamps on him. Wasn't Roby. Roby did not play a single game against T.Y. Hilton. Gary on Conley did, and he shut him down. Gary on Conley, whoever he went against, he shut him down. Now, why do people underrate Conley? Because people think our secondary is bad. When no, it's not the secondary. The secondary is not the issue. The issue is the pass rush. And hopefully with the addition of Ross Blacklock, you know, Jacob Martin, Charles Omenahu, J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, uh, Jonathan Grenard, hopefully with all those guys, the pass rush can be good. 
and our secondary doesn't look as bad because if you look at my top five breakout candidates, three of them are DB players. Two of them are already good. I'm projecting two of them to become superstar players. Like, I think Gary on Conley is going to be so damn good. We're not going to be able to afford him. I'm not even kidding. I think this guy can reach superstar status. I really do think so. I think he's our best corner. And, I mean, just look at our secondary. We got Gary on Conley, Justin Reed. We have Roby. And then if uh, Lonnie Johnson actually, you know, does good next year. We have four good players in that secondary with two of them potentially becoming superstars in Justin Reed and Gary on Conley. The only concern would be Eric Murray, but how many teams don't have holes on their team? You know, like every team has a hole. So it's not like having Eric Murray back there is going to make our secondary abysmal. No, we got plenty of good players in that secondary and... I think three of them can really have a breakout season next year. And if all three of them break out, watch out. Because this time around, we're not going to go up 24-0 on the Chiefs and lose 51-31. to This time around, we're going to go up 28-0 and lose 41-34 to instead. So, yeah, watch out. For all these players, I think we have a bunch of players that are capable of breaking out, especially on the defensive side of the ball. That's why I'm honestly not too worried about the Texans defense. I think they're going to be all right. Like I said in a previous video, they're not going to be a top five dominant unit. No, but to expect them to be middle of the pack, like 16th best defense, 15th best defense, that's extremely realistic because the Texans defense isn't as bad as a lot of people seem to think and we have a lot of young players that are capable of becoming cornerstone players for this franchise so yeah that's pretty much all I have for you guys for today comment down below your own top five breakout candidates and be sure to like and subscribe thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later peace